Welcome, welcome everyone. Hello. Welcome to everyone here at Landmark on Main Street's Gene Rimsky Theater. And also to all the folks joining us at home via live stream. My name is Amanda Kowalczyk. I'm the manager of community affairs here at the Landmark Theater. And I'm very happy to be with you here all today. For today's program, we are pleased to welcome Warren Shine and Charles Henry. Let's give them a warm welcome. Warren will be presenting his program, The Kid from the Catskills. It's guaranteed to be a good time. Warren is a landmark regular, and I know a lot of you are excited to see him perform here today. I would like to extend a warm, a warm thank you to our sponsor, the New York State Council on the Arts, and also a special thanks to Serendipity for their generous tea donation, and a thank you to Stop and Shop for donating their delicious cookies once again. And now, please give a warm welcome once again to Warren Shine and Charles Henry. Enjoy. Are that good, I can't see so well. How's everybody? You really okay? Welcome and bienvenue. craziest thing happened on my way here. I had to stop at Rite Aid because I'm leaving for Minnesota tomorrow and I needed a few things like I needed toothpaste and shaving cream. So I ran in, long line, and I finally get to the cashier. She was so grumpy. She kept looking at me saying, strip down, will you just strip down? So I didn't know, so I start taking off my clothes when I realized she meant my debit card. <laughs> Come here, the man. Now you get it. <laughs> 
Come blow your horn, start celebrating Right this way, your table's waiting No use permitting some prophet of doom this little insulated piece because you'll be staring at it the whole time I'm here. It's lovely to be back at the landmark on Main Street. This is like my home. You know, call me often, Amanda, will you? I got, I'm, I'm, here I am 50 years in show business this month. Thank you. Some friend of mine a few weeks said, when are you going to retire? I said, when you walk over my grave. Which reminds me of a joke that Freddie Roman gave me. Can I tell it to you? Whether you like it or not. At the prices you're paying, I can do what I want. So anyhow, there was this couple that married 47 years. Unfortunately, the wife got sick, she passed away. They had a beautiful funeral for her. At the end of the service, the pallbearers walked up, lifted up the coffin, start walking out of the chapel when the coffin hits the wall. Boom! From inside the coffin you hear, oh my God! It's a miracle. She lived. She's alive. She lived another three years. Unfortunately, she got sick again, passed away again. Another funeral. Again, at the end of the service, the pallbearers got up, picked up the coffin, started to walk out. The husband stood up, turned around, and yelled out, Watch out for the wall! <laughs> I like that. It was cute. Which reminds me... I'm from the Catskills, guys, and you know what? I'm the, except for Bernie Burns and a couple of others, Dick Capri, you're looking at the youngest of oldest of what's left. But if you ever went, how many of you have been up, you, you've been to the Catskills, right? Uh, I'm looking around the room, I think I'm the only one here with original hips, but, <laughs> no, 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 you, take it, take it. You know, I grew up in Queens Village, which is not, and I'm a poor white, you're from Queens Village? Son of a bitch. Wait a minute. Where, what part? The manor or the terrace? Oh. What's your name? Warren Shine. You single? Do you cook? Wait, Zimmel? Zimmel? Lachman, this is working the hag in the. You make a nice brisket? Because, honey, I'll be over tonight. It real stuffed cabbage? I love it, but it gives me gas. Um, anyhow, there were these two guys from Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Two wonderful Jewish kids. Kids born on the same day, their parents lived next door. They spent their whole lives living next door to each other, went to school together, college together. They're now in their senior days. And they're having a great time, Izzy and Murray. One day, Izzy is walking down the street in Williamsburg when all of a sudden, Murray shows up, pulls up in his car. A brand new convertible Lexus. Izzy says, Murray, what's with this car? He said, my new girlfriend, Sarah, she gave it to me. Izzy said, I'm not surprised. She's walking around the whole neighborhood telling everyone how much she loves and adores you. But how did this happen? Just the other day, she calls me up and says, Murray, get dressed. I'm going to pick you up in a half hour. Let's drive up to the Catskills for the day. So she picks him up and off they go. They get to Route 17, pull off in Monroe, and she drives into this beautiful me meadow. Trees and flowers and bees and butterflies, the aromas like perfume. She pulls into the center of the meadow, puts the top down on the Lexus convertible, gets out of the car, goes over to where Murray's sitting. She starts disrobing every piece of clothing she has on. She's standing in front of him completely naked. She says, Murray, Murray, my darling, I love you with all of my heart. Please take anything you want. So we took the car. 
Is he said it's a good thing because her clothes would never fit you. I think that was cute. I wrote that. And if you don't like it again, I don't care. I've got you. We okay so far? I, I want to make Amanda happy. She's a sweetheart to work with. She really is a doll. I'm not kidding. Brought me tea. I really wanted gin and tonic. But I understand, you know. I'm on a seafood diet now. I see food and I eat it. You may not notice from the last time you saw me, I've lost 31 pounds. I want to get back to my original weight, six pounds, eight ounces, but I'm trying. Because, you know, growing up in Queens Village, I graduated Martin Van Buren in 1970. I'll never forget, I came home from school one day, I said, Mom, guess what? I got the part in a school play. She says, darling, this is wonderful. What's the part? I said, I play the part of a Jewish husband. She starts screaming and yelling. She says, Tamara, you go back to school. You tell the teacher you want a speaking part. <laughs> I'm having a good time. Hold up. Take it easy. Okay. I love this kid. I love this kid. Um, <laughs> No, it's true. And my grandmother, we, I lived on 230th Street, right across from Bell Park Manor Terrace in the school. And um, my mother was only about this tall, and she worked for the Board of Ed. She was a truant officer. She was as tall as Bernice McGalnick. This, this young lady sitting in one, two, the third seat in the center makes the best kugel on the face of the earth. I'm not going to ask if you brought me some today, but... From the looks of things, I don't see it, and I hate your guts. So, no, I'm kidding. I love her. But my grandmother lived with us. And you know, the kids in those days, you would do chores and things around the house. You get a little allowance. Today, that doesn't happen. You do something around the house, your parents buy you a new BMW. So I would do things, and I was a big James Bond fan. And that new movie, it called Goldfinger. So my f parents said, we're going to go out Friday night, see the movie. Nanda's coming with us. We go to see Goldfinger. And as soon as the movie is over, my mother, God bless her, may she rest in peace, was a woman of no patience whatsoever. She said, all right, come on, let's go. The movie's over. My father says, I can't get up. My backside fell asleep. To which my, she says, she says, backsides don't fall asleep. My grandmother chimes in, oh, yes, they do. I heard it snoring. <laughs> I'm on a roll here, kid. I'm on a roll. This is, what a, this is, but these are true stories. I'm not, my father would never go to the doctor. One day she, she says, Dave, you're going. He's gone five hours for a checkup. He finally walks in. She goes, yeah, five hours for a checkup just to stick his finger up your duchess and say you're okay. What is this? She says, that doctor you sent me to is crazy. He's a madman. He says, Dave, you got herpes. Herp what the heck is her? She goes, calm down. It's not. Look it up in the dictionary. Mm. Oh, you got nothing to worry about. It says here, it's a disease of the Gentiles. I love it when it's a Jewish crowd. Oh, my God. And my father, God bless him. God bless him. He was a little cheap. I, I love the man. You know, in those days when you retired, no computers, no Google, no nothing. He'd have to go down to Jamaica Avenue in Jamaica near Stearns to the Social Security office to collect. Young lady behind the counter says, can I help you? He says, yeah, I'm here to get Social Security, but I lost all my important papers I can't find, she says, sir, that won't be a problem. If you'd be so kind as to unbutton your shirt, open it up, and simply show me your chest full of white hair. He thought a moment and said an unusual request. What the heck? So he unbuttoned his shirt, opened it up, and showed his chest full of white hair. She looked at him and said, wonderful, you're in. You have social security. He was so excited, he buttoned up his shirt, tucked it in, drove home, walked in the house and said, darling, guess what? I got social security. And all I had to do was open my shirt and show them my chest full of white hair. To which my mother replied, Dave, why didn't you drop your pants? You could have gotten disability. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, my God. And then they decided to retire. You like that, did you? You could write it down, went hair, took out the shirt, put it in, could have gotten disability. Okay, I just want to be sure. It's like one night, one night I was working at a club, 
And this girl comes over to me. She goes, Warren, when you sing, it's like, it's like music to my ears. It's like honey to my ears. Why don't you come back to my apartment? And you know what? I have mirrors throughout the apartment. We'll have such a, a great time. And bring a bottle. So I went to a house. I stopped off first, and I got a bottle of Windex. One girl said to me, come on over quick. There's nobody home. I went over there. There was nobody home. <laughs> you know, oh, it's terrible. And it's, it's today with your health. You got to stay healthy. You really have to stay. I'm not kidding. You have to stay healthy. It's like all these things they advertise on television. You know, fellas, I, I found out I have this new gland that I never knew I had. It's called the prostate. Don't look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. And it's really something. It's like, I can only explain how bad it is in six words. I pee like a stutterer talks. So, all right, it wasn't that good, okay. Well, the other night I wake up at 4.30, I gotta go. And I'm standing there, and I'm waiting, and I'm singing, and I'm humming, and I'm praying. I'm telling myself jokes. I'm dripping my hand into some warm water. I finally hear my significant other say, who the heck are you talking to? I said, no one you'd remember. <laughs> but it's, it's terrible. When, and, and how many of these spam calls you get all day long that want to sell you Medicare and all this stuff? And uh, Who needs it? It's terrible. Don't just hang up on them. Don't don't listen. But just stay healthy. That's all I say. It's it's just it's 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 like many years ago my father fell, he broke his hip. He had to go into uh, you know, rehab. So I go, Pop, how do you like it? He goes, I love it here. It's great, the food is good. It, it, we have games in the good game. It's great. And every night just before I go to sleep, they give me a delicious cup of hot chocolate and Viagra. I said, What? Yeah. So I go outside to the lobby. I find one of the nurses. I said, I must ask you, uh, my father, Dave, Shine, uh, at night he goes to sleep, you give him, you know, uh, like coffee or a hot chocolate. Fire. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You see, the, the hot drink calms and soothes his nerves. The Viagra stops him from rolling off the bed. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, it's, 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 I could go, I don't even know why you're here today. No, I'm not kidding. You're right, you like some of these old ones, you know? But it's true, it's just, it's, it's, this is a true story. May I tell you? A num sure, oh, you're sitting in the cheap seats in the bank, in the back. I had to go to the bank, think, you know, this is what I thought, how are you? Whoever you are, I can't see you. I had to go to the bank. But you know, when you reach a certain age, you know, it's that Metamucil, you know, you gotta take it every day. I look at Metamucil this way. If it works, it's a pleasure. If it doesn't, it's aggravation. So I took it in the morning and I was doing some errands and I go to the bank and it's starting to take effect. If you ever see me running down Main Street, it's because it's starting to work. <laughs> so anyhow, I get to the bank and this thing is starting and I don't know what to do. And I say a sign, bathrooms are for employees only. But I had to go. So I signed an application to work at the bank. I mean, but I want to tell you, if you ever have to go for a colonoscopy, it's no big deal today. You know, the day before, they give you that stuff to drink. Don't worry about it. You don't need it. Look for the nearest White Castle. <laughs> don't eat the White Castle there. Come home first and then eat them because you'll never get home in time. And you'll never get that odor out of the car. You won't. So anyhow, I, you know, they, the doctors, they make you come for a, a little talking to before you take the test. And my gastroenterologist happened to retire. So the nurse brings me in and says, don't worry, Dr. Warren, the doctor will be right in. Just sit on that, you know, that lab table with the white crinkly paper from Bloomingdale's. It's all their leftover wrapping paper from the holidays. It's so loud when you're crinkling. So anyhow, she leaves. A few minutes later, the door opens. This six foot three doctor comes in. Hello, Mr. Shine. It's nice to meet you. You know the routine. If you wouldn't mind, please undo your pants, take them off, and just hang them on the hook on the back of the door next to my pants. <laughs> this guy looked like Captain Hook. And I'm saying, what? Well, okay. Now, if you just hop onto the table, bend over, face the wall, and you hear the snap of that rubber glove that he puts on, and he opens up the cabinet, must have been to Costco, takes out this five-gallon container, 
boom, puts it on the counter, opens it up, and he's dipping his hand, and he's grinding it around, this KY jelly going, going. He goes, okay, here goes. Oh, you look beautiful, beautiful. Everything looks beautiful. Can you imagine what this guy's family must look like? He says, okay, clean up a little bit. My office is just down the hall. We'll have a little discussion. Just as he's leaving, the nurse comes back in. The door closes, and she says to me, Warren, who was that gentleman that was in here with you? <laughs> you don't think this stuff could happen? It's like my father was great, but he was a little cheap. He got even the rabbi of our temple in trouble with the IRS. The IRS called the temp, you know, called the temple. Phone rings. Rabbi goes, hello? Hello, is this Rabbi Schwartz? Yes, it is. Rabbi Schwartz, does Mr. Shine go to your temple? Yes, he does. Rabbi Schwartz, did Mr. Shine donate $10,000 to your temple? Rabbi said, yes, he will. You have, I'm having such a nice time. I love it. How about I sing a little bit? I'm getting tired of looking at you. No, I'm teasing you. Tell you come on. As I look around the room, I'm the most famous person here. No. Look who's here. Ken and Renee, who just became grandparents the other day. Right? How old's the baby? Two. You don't know how to speak? Will you take that, Kenny? You've been wearing that mask since you were born. Till you die. Yeah, I know. Kenny's mother, by the way, was a fabulous singer in the Catskills. Uh, um, Mitzi Crane. And she sang with Steve Lawrence. Oh, I wish I had known her. Because to tell you the truth, I could tell her a lot of stories about her son. And I must tell you, working in the Catskills was the greatest thrill of my life. Of course, by the time I started, it was already coming down. But I had the thrill to be working with people like Toady Fields, Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet, Red Buttons, Red Skelton, funny guy, Marty Allen and Steve Rossi. Remember Crazy? He used to go, hello there! And it was, it was really the best time next to being here. No, really. It, it really is. Because It'll never be again. It just, it doesn't matter where you go and what you do. It'll never be again. And they just opened up a new museum. You, those that drive, you should go visit. It's not that far. And those of you that don't, make your kids feel guilty and have them take you. It's a great museum and a great theater. We're going to be going up there, but I haven't told you that yet. We're going to volunteer our time and do a show. Whether you like it or not. We're going to do it, and it's great. But it's nice being here. It is because the last gig we were playing, it was in Philly, and for the first half hour, there was no applause or recognition. I thought perhaps the audio system wasn't working, so I gently tapped on the mic. I said, Mike must be dead. Gentleman in the front row turned to his friend and said, Hey, did you hear? Mike died. <laughs> All right, I had enough talking. Here's a song that's played on the radio. What are you complaining about? Does she come together? You happy guy? Happy wife, happy life. You take out the garbage? Do you fold the pillows? Does he do everything you tell him? What's your favorite diner? Great neck? Go to the Omega, it's better. I know what I'm talking about. I know diners, I know diners. Are you kidding? We have a diner up here on Main Street, it's good. But it's not like the old, the old diners we used to go to. Okay, here's a Sinatra song. It's played every single day in every town, village, city, country in the world. You're free to see and sing along. I'll just walk around with a box and go like, I've got you under my skin. Well, I've got you deep in the heart of, come on. So deep in my heart that I'm really fond of you. I've got you under my skin. Give me a hand. I, but you're warm, hot mama, not to give in. I said to myself, this affair never will go so well. If I ever change, you'll be first. Look at this hair. My God, 
Another week, it'll look like this. It's real. <laughs> You're my ass. It's real. So why? Should... Where are we, Charlie? I lost my place. Darling, I know so well. Because I've got you under my skin. You're nice and warm. I'd sacrifice anything, come what might, for the sake of having you near. If I held your tushy, you'd be my puppet. Oh, you did. <laughs> Use your mentality. Wake up to reality. Every time I see the thought of you, can be stop before Cause I've got you. I'm glad I'm not married to you. Until my skin. Here he is, the greatest sax player on the face of the earth. That's right, Stanley Shapiro. He's even got his card here. If you need a little therapy, he's great. He's great. He's best. He's a very long time friend. I'd sacrifice anything, come what might, for the sake of having you near, in spite of a warning voice comes in the night and repeats and repeats in my ear don't you know you fool you never can win i'll leave you alone hey, use your mentality he went to the dark side use your mentality but each time that i do just the thought of you makes me stop before i begin cause i've got you under my skin. Look at all that jewelry. You must buy it in the beauty parlor. I'd sacrifice anything, come what might, for the sake of having you near. I'd climb over this chair, but I'd get a hernia and repeat and repeat in my ear. Don't you know, you fool? You never can win. Use your mentality. Wake up to reality. But each time that I do, just the thought of you makes me stop before I begin. Cause I've got you under my skin. I'm walking backwards because once I did this, I fell on my ass. Cause I've got you under my skin. Yes, I've got Yes, I've got you under my skin. But I don't. Thank you. You know who's here today? A very special lady and her daughter. What? All of a sudden, you know, you don't speak English. I said, there's a very special lady here. Do you know folks, how many of you are from Port Washington? You got money. <laughs> you got a lot of money. No, there's a lady here who happens to be the original owner of the flooring enterprise, Anthony's World of Floors in Manahaven. Damn right. I could say things like she's laid a lot of floors, but I want to tell you how much I love her entire family. When I was a kid, I don't need a partner. I had one. I had one, and she took my house. No, but Rosie, but, I, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you the truth about the Garofalo family. I can do what I want, and mind your business, <laughs> Anne Marie, because uh, this is why you don't get along with people. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I used to go to their house. I was president of the poor chamber for 27 years and other things in town, you know, because I had no family. They didn't like me because I was never home. But this lady would say with her husband, Anthony, listen, we, and their kids, we would do things like Harbor Fest and at Christmas time, we used to make homemade Christmas decorations on the street. But when Hanukkah came, they said, the heck with you. And um, no, there wasn't anything that this family would not do at the, at the, Town Dock, 
the tugboat that's there, we brought that all the way from Staten Island on a flatbed truck with a bunch of friends. There's a lots, of, lots of things that I'm very fortunate that I was able to just work with other people. I never asked for anything and I never got a watch or anything like that. But this family was so good to me that there were nights when they said we worked all day and she knew how much I loved Italian food. That's because I'm Jewish. She made the best lasagna and brajol I ever had in my life. And it was like being at home. She was like a second mother. And she just had her birthday. She was 39. 93. And let me do, let's do a little, uh, you made me love you. This is for you, Rosie, baby. There's nobody else, honey, this is it. You, you've really fallen down the ladder if this is the best you can get. You made me love you. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. But your cooking was so good. No, yes, I do. I really want to do it. You made me happy sometimes. You made me sad. But there were times, sweetie, you made me feel so glad. still are dear and you know it I guess that you know it I'll always love you it's true yes indeed yes indeed I love you indeed I do now give me give me give me give me what I die for you know you got the kind of kisses that I'll die for <laughs> you're such a liar you made me love only you. I love you, Rosie. Happy birthday. Boy, I got such a killer. I love you, Rosie. She's a doll. All right, you got enough pictures? I'll take a couple wallet size, please. It's nice when you're in a town for so Oh, my God. Because I got water on my legs. I'm just a mess. I'm falling apart. It's, it, it isn't easy. But this year, when some friends called and said, you know, you're really spending. You know, remember Grossinger's? Well, well, Elaine Grossinger, Jenny's daughter, is still alive. She lives not far from me in Delray Beach. And she's about 96. She looks fantastic. Still doesn't like me. But her, if it had not been for her mother, Jenny, they would have never been the Catskill Mountains like they were. And they were, and they'll never be again. And it's the greatest memory. And I'm making a living talking about it, you know? Because this is really what I've always wanted to do my whole life, nothing else. I never wanted to be a doctor, and I never wanted to be a lawyer. <laughs> and I'm Jewish. So, okay, Charles. Here's a song. You know, we actually had requests. I hope I'm not boring anybody. Everybody's all right? Here's a song, my favorite recording artist. His name was Mel Torme. And what did they call him? The Velvet Fog. You are so right. You know what they call me? The Little Idiot, no. They call me the Velvet Mist. In no way have I ever tried to imitate him, but to emulate his style his finesse at the microphone. Here's a song he recorded. It was first played on one of the greatest New York radio stations, WNEW 1130 AM. What are you pointing? You did, what did you do? The newsroom. And did you, what did you do in the newsroom? You listened to the great, that's true. That's really true. They played the music of everyone who was dead. But he did record this, and this was on my very first CD. We sold thousands, hundreds. 
six. Three, I had to give to my family because they were too cheap to buy it. But I sing this to all of you today. I can only give you love that lasts forever and a promise to be near each time you call and the only heart I own is for you and you alone that's all Give you country walks in springtime and a hand to hold when leaves begin to fall and a love whose burning light will warm those winter nights that's all mm, that's all there are those I'm sure They would give you the world for a toy. All I have are these arms to enfold you. And a love time will never destroy. So if you're wondering what I'm asking in return, The Steinway D Grand Piano, my over 40 year closest friend, Mr. Charles Henry. A fabulous composer, lyricist, pianist. He's worked many places. The uh, Dunkin' Donuts on Northern Boulevard. No, really, I'm not kidding. The Papaya King on 72nd Street in New York. In fact, I think what, you're gonna be there Friday at eight o'clock. That's right, where well, you get a hot dog and a papaya drink for $1.50. You're laughing, you probably had it. You know, but when you do, you better watch out because, but he's a dear friend and what makes it even more special that we've been friends for 40 years, his beautiful wife, Josephine, is sitting here and they just celebrated their 40th wedding anniversary. My life would not be the same without them in it. And I say that from my heart, not for what he's getting paid. <laughs> it's true. It's just if they could change the light because it's reflecting off your head and I can't see. No, Dad, come on. I can say whatever I want to him. He can. I know I can. I can. I'm in a very romantic mood. It's because of Miss Queen's Village. I forgot your name already. That's how much I like you. No. You still live there? Is this a hard question? Where did you move to? 
Bayside. Where in Bayside? In the condos or the big buildings? Behind. So you really... What is this, a big conversation? The what? I could care less, but you... What do you... You, you, you got money too, that's... Oh, we'll talk. They always say that, but they don't... You know, they always say that. We'll talk. We'll talk. I love it when they say that to me. You know, we'll talk. We're going to get together. Don't you love when you bump into somebody at ShopRite? You ever go to the ShopRite in New Hyde Park? Uh, you, my, the, black, the, the back of my, my ankles are black and blue from all the Fakakta people moving those carts. First of all, it's like you go to Florida, right? Bob, you know, Del Rey, you see cars on 95 going by with no drivers. Little guys driving like this with four pillows under their tuchus. Bernice, are we in Boynton Beach yet? I'm playing the village of Oreo in Del Rey. I don't know if you know Del Rey. Anybody from the, 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 the down in Florida? Snowbirds here? You're shaking your head like you think I can see it. Anyhow, I'm working there and I pull up to the gate and they got this little four by two piece of wood that comes down. This is what's gonna stop your car. All of a sudden, the, sec the security guard opens the door and he starts walking out. And as he's getting closer to my car, he's getting closer to the ground from the weight of the number two Ticonderoga pencil in his pocket. He says, can I help you? I said, yes, I'm here to do a show tonight. He said, it doesn't snow in Florida. I said, how? He, 42 years he's working there. He's been collecting social security before Jesus. So I pull into the parking lot. And of course, if you don't have a handicap sticker in Florida, you, I, you could be parking in Brooklyn. You got to walk there. So I finally park my car, I go into the theater, we're getting ready, and people are coming in, and I go out through the stage door in the back and I'm watching them park. They get out of their cars, and they have to put little decorations on the windows, uh, a piece of ribbon, plastic flowers, a balloon, something, because they need to remember where they parked. They come in the theater, I go back out, and I change all the decorations from one car to another. When the show is over, I watch 500 Jews all trying to get into the same white Honda Accord. <laughs> you know, what could you do? This is, this is the things that happen. You, it's, it's just so crazy. But I love driving and I love being in Florida. And when my mother was alive and I'd be working, you know, we'd, we'd go out for dinner at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And we get into the car, but she has to drive. All you can see is the top of her head. What a, oh my gosh. So we get in the car, we pull out of the village of Oreo in her 1973 Buick Regal. Dad, you're telling me, oh God. I was doing the whole Tom Selleck thing, you know, from Blue Bloods. And I've been on Blue Bloods, by the way. The biggest thrill in my life is walking underneath between Tom Selleck's legs and I touch nothing. <laughs> no, really, it's true, it's true. My, no one, does anyone notice that my hair looks different, those that know me? Did you ever think I'd have hair like this? I went to a hair, I get my hair cut about two months ago. This Russian guy, Sergei, I don't know. And all of a sudden, it's straight, it's always been straight, beautiful. I even got hair, you know? All of a sudden, the next day, I take a shower, you know, use the, the towel, and my hair turns into this. I'm at the doctor, I said, Dr. Dr. Koss, what's this? He goes, get used to it. it, happens to everybody. So this is really my hair, and I hope you like it, because I'm stuck with it, <laughs> you know? But anyhow, so my mother gets in the car, we're driving. We pull out of the village Oreo, we get on Jog Road, the light is just gonna turn red in Atlantic. She makes that left turn and she's beaming down. We get over to A1A, she makes a right turn right through the yellow light, and we're going south into Boca. She's going into every light that's red, doesn't care. We make a left turn, and then she makes a right turn, it's a right into the parking lot. We get out, I said, Mom. She goes, what, darling? You, 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 she says, honey, you, you, you're perspiring so much. I said, mom, do you realize you went through at least three red lights? She said, I'll tell you the truth. I didn't even realize I was driving. <laughs> oh, my God. And what do they do in Florida every day? They get up, they go to see their doctors.
And I'm looking around this room. I see a lot of you go to doctors. My mother had a motto. She changed doctors whenever the one she was going to disagreed with her diagnosis. Oh, really? And now, you ever try to get a hold of your doctor on the phone? Remember when they used to go? I go to Dr. Bedenstock right here in town. Don't you love her? Her father, and this is not a lie, her father was my pediatrician. His office was on the corner of Union Turnpike and Little Neck Parkway. That's how long I saw her yesterday, Holly. She's a great doctor. She's only taking new patients if I recommend. What? Yes. Yeah. You know, is this going to be a long story? Because I got other things to do today. You know, I do. So, you know, but, but, um, it's just true. So now when you kind of call your doctor, you, you get this message on an answering service. You know, it's not like, hi, yo, got the doctor. It goes like this. Thank you for calling Physicians Diagnostic Services. Please listen closely because our menu has changed. I'm not looking to get takeout. <laughs> if you're bleeding from your eye, press one. If you're bleeding from your tushy, press two. Oh, it's really, it's something. It's, 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 I'm going to, well, I got a whole Viagra thing, but you guys have passed that already. It doesn't matter. No, don't try to convince me of it. I'm not doing it. You know, my uncle thought he was a doctor, but he was a pharmacist in the Bronx. He had a pharmacy. And on Saturdays, we'd work there part-time doing stock. And one day, this woman comes in, and she says in a whisper, Saul, I need some arsenic. He said, arsenic, what do you, I can't give you all. What are you going to do with the arsenic? She opens up her purse, takes out a photograph, hands it to my uncle, Saul, and he looks at it. It's a picture of her husband in bed with his wife. He looks at her and said, why didn't you tell me you brought a prescription? <laughs> we had this little lady who came in, Mrs. Angelina. She was very nice. She comes, she goes, a song. <laughs> a song. <laughs> I got, that's an Italian accent, if you haven't picked it up. Yeah, I, I got this bad cough. He goes, calm down, Mrs. Angelina, I'll get you something. So we go in the back, and he reaches up to the top shelf, gets this huge jar of castor oil, pours some in a little butter, bottle, puts a cop tap on it, and goes out, and he gives it to her, and he says, you know, you're going to take it. I said, Uncle Saul, cast you can't give a castor oil. That's not for a cough. He said, after she drinks this, 20 minutes later, she'll be afraid to cough. Okay, I'm, I'm really having a, I haven't had a, you know, Amanda, I have not had such a good time since last Thursday. I went down to Yoina Schimmel's to, let's do what I did for love. Amanda told me she has a favorite song called My Mia Bista Shane. No, I'm kidding, it really isn't. <laughs> but it was nice of you to make that moaning sound. And let me say, that was a nice way to do it, too. It was, no. It's, it's, a, it's a show that was written by Marvin Hamlish, may he rest in peace. Probably one of the top 10 most famous Broadway shows, revived, what, six or seven times. And this song has been sung, oh gosh, by a lot of famous recording artists, but not as famous as me. But I want to sing this for you because you're so sweet to work with. I don't call this work. This is fun for me. At this stage of my life, the mortgage is paid. I have two cars. And a couple of pain in the ass kids that only want my money. No, I, I don't mean that. I love them all. <laughs> Be nice if they call. This is for you, sweetheart. Kiss today goodbye. The sweetness and the sorrow We did what we had to do And I won't regret what I did for love What I did for It's as if we always 
I'm in such a romantic mood now that I'm going to have to talk about one of the greatest recording artists. And he lived in Port Washington. All right, come on, give me a break. Let me say something smart. He lived in Sands Point. And I know the house he lived in. And did you know that Jackie Gleason lived in Roslyn? He did. Well, anyhow, many, many years ago, about 1974, I'm coming back from Florida. And I'm, you know, at a college and the whole thing, and I'm starting a career, and I'm standing in LaGuardia, and who's standing 10 feet from me in a golf shirt and a Sergio Valente outfit? You know, some of you that you wear it like you think you're going jogging somewhere. And I had to introduce myself to him. You know what his favorite place was in town? Carlos Pizza. And he walked, you just never saw him. He walked. That's what a lot of Italian gentlemen do, and Jews. We all walk. We don't know where we're walking. But we walk. So I introduced myself. We have a conversation. He goes, well, if we both live in port, you know, call, tell, tell your driver not to come. Come with me. I'm in a limousine with friggin' Perry Como. And we're talking and talking. And he says, well, Warren, tell me, what is it that you want to do when you grow up? I said, well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Como. He said, stop with the Mr. Como thing. I used to be a barber in Cannesburg, Pennsylvania. He was call me Perry. I said, OK, Perry. I want to be a boy singer. And he just looked me and he held my hand and he says, you know what? So do I. <laughs> do you know that he was one of the very first people to have two gold records in one year? Here's a song that was written by Don McLean and in his own right, a fabulous composer, lyricist, and he did very well. But when Perry recorded this song, he sure made money, but he made a lot of money for Don. 
but I love this song so much. And I'm going to sing this to Bernice McGalnick, who's sitting in the third row on the aisle, whether you like it or not. Delicious peppermint tea from a man. It's cold, but it's all right. Don't, don't worry about it. No, I'm kidding. And I love you so. The people ask me how. How I've lived till now. Tell them I don't know. I guess they'll understand how lonely life has been. But life began again the day you took my hand. You know, how are we doing on time, baby? Because we'll be serving breakfast soon. We're okay? Anybody got to make an early bird dinner or something? Or, you know, where are you eating out tonight? What are you, all of a sudden you ought to hear it? Where are you going tonight? No, why not? Where'd you, where'd you go for lunch? Oh, you with the, the $5 lunch. You, you, by the way, you know, in Manorhaven, there's the Adult Senior Center. Are those of you familiar with it? I'm a past president. I've been on the board for 25, 30 years. The second Saturday in October, we're having our annual big gala right here at um, Landmark on Main Street called Port Scott Talent. A lot of talented people in town, and it's to raise money 
for our center. And if you're not a member, you should be, because it's a nice place to be with meeting nice new friends, and we have activities and things. I go there all the time. I go to meditate. It's what I'm not eating. And, but it's a wonderful place, and I always, huh? No, uh, it, huh? Oh, is there? I didn't know that. And why'd you have to bring that up? I have enough competence. No, I'm kidding. But it is a wonderful center, and we work very, very hard. And by doing these concerts that, that I'm not taking credit for it, even though I thought of it. We started it three years before COVID, and then we did the fourth one. And God willing, after we do the fifth, we would have raised more money on these five concerts since the center was opened in 1961 with the help of Maury Barsky. We would have, we'll be raising, it'll be close to $50,000. Because we don't get a lot of funding. We get some grants and things. But I feel that it's more important to not only to take care of yourself and your children and your grandchildren, but we have to take care of our grandparents. And I'm old enough to be there. But we really do. Because every day, although I have a very small family, I miss everybody. That's why I think I'm in this business. Because if I do anything today with my good friend Charles, if we've made you forget your aches, your pains, or the forbidden or you're sitting next to, and I can tell he's a, you know, the other way around, he's afraid to talk. I'm teasing, I really am. Um, if we've done anything like that and made you feel good, then we've done our job and I'm happy for that, I'm happy. Uh, let's do impossible, okay? This is Perry Como's second gold record. Actually, it was two songs in one month. It was January, I think, of 1970. If I were to ask you folks, who sold more gold records than anyone else, one at a time, who do you think it would have been? Who? Who said that? Elvis Presley. Most people say... Warren Shine, Frank Sinatra. You know who number two really was? Perry Como. I, I, I know I talk too much and I talk about him. He was the sweetest man. And when he left Port Washington, he moved to Florida and North Carolina in the mountains. And I can say that I got to visit him in Florida. And when he passed away, he had Alzheimer's, unfortunately but he was a gentleman and he loved ice cream, so I'd always bring him Baskin Robbins. And sometimes he would say, you feel like pizza? He actually called me, can you believe it? And my brother would say, there's a guy on, this is stupid, my brother. There's a guy on the phone, his name is Perry Como. He wants to know if you wanna go and have pizza with him. So my mother has to explain, and that weekend on Saturday, he was on Channel 4, I believe, on, uh, on television for 44 years, you know? RCA Victor. Okay, enough of that. Here's his second big hit. Amanda, I'd sing this to you, but you're just a baby. It's impossible Tell the sun to leave the sky It's just impossible it's impossible Ask a baby not to cry It's just impossible Can I hold you Closer to me And not feel you Going through me Split the seconds That I never think of you it's impossible. Can the ocean keep from rushing to the shore? It's impossible. If I had you, could I ever want for more? It's just impossible.
very soul and not regret it. For to live without your love, it's impossible. Mr. Charles Henry. The greatest gift I ever received in my life, other than my beautiful family and my parents, I had a great family growing up. I don't have a single complaint, ever. Never did. Never complain. Well, <laughs> I'm Jewish. It's got to get a complaint about something. But a great family. I'm going tomorrow. I'm flying to Minnesota because I have a brother and sister in law there and another brother in. Boynton Beach, and we're all going to celebrate. Any Lonsman for Rosh Hashanah? I wish you a very happy Yontif, and you, those of you that are celebrating Easter, eat a lot, eat a lot. What can I say? Well, I haven't seen my brothers, believe it or not, in seven years. Too long. What a mistake. But seven years ago, I had emergency crippled, triple, no teeth. I had a triple, but quadruple bypass at North Shore Hospital. Dr. Jerry Koss saved my life. I wouldn't be here today doing what I just love to do. That's your doctor? Isn't that great? We'll have to talk later. <laughs> why, do you, why do people have to always top you? It's like I said, oh, I used to love that other diner. Oh, but I go to, I go to Omega. You want to talk about diners? That's not a diner. Or Chinese food. That's another thing, Chinese food. Oh, I don't go to one lucky, I go to one hang low. I go, to, I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. Let me tell you, there's no good Chinese restaurants around. You gotta go into Manhattan, downtown, go to Bobo's, Hopke, there you get the good stuff. Unless you're on a salt-free diet. <laughs> so I don't go anymore, you know, I don't. I'm, I actually cook, can you believe it? I have a binder with takeout menus. I do, no, I really, really do. But I, I just, God gave me a gift of whatever it may be. And last year I was awarded Entertainer of the Year, state of Massachusetts, especially Cape Cod. I perform in the largest cabaret conference. It's called Cabaret Fest in Provincetown. <laughs> I open for a lot of great drag queens. And I love every minute of it. And I do a different kind of stand-up, as you can tell. Um, but 
I was awarded that, and it was, it was a surprise. I didn't know. And um, for those of you, remember Hollywood Palace? You don't remember Hollywood? Oh, so you're not that old then. No, but um, there was a gal. Her name is Marilyn May. Marilyn May just turned 95. I just saw her up in Provincetown. She's a very dear friend, and she sings just like she did her entire life. She's great. And I'm going to keep doing this for as long as I can. I'm not going to be like Sinatra. I'm going to keep going. Honey, how are we doing? You keep saying that. It could be 6 o'clock. No, I, listen, I, I got nothing to do tonight but pack. I just take one of them. I'm like, you ever watch uh, some, Everybody Loves Raymond? When he travels, he shoves everything into a plastic bag. I love all the characters, especially Marie Barone. My mother was Marie, Marie Barone. She was the character that they used to create it. And whenever we would say, Mom, don't you love? Everybody loves her. I hate it. She was just like Marie. She was and a cook. And God forbid you would say you were eating at your mother-in-law's house. You'll eat that garbage? No, she was. But next to, next to Bernice, I always have to say, and don't I always say this, Bernice? My mother was a fantastic cook, except nothing Italian. She didn't, she would, spaghetti with ketchup or something. One day I called up, I said, Mommy, R Rosie's mother said, asked me if I could come for dinner. They're having uh, spaghetti with gravy. I didn't know what gravy was. I thought it's something you put on pot roast. But my mother couldn't, but my mother was a, she was a, she was a great cook. But when it came to Italian, we ate out. We did. How about, um, what do you want to do, Charles? I don't know. What do you, did I wake you? <laughs> what? Just one more? Oh, then it's got to be a Sinatra. Yeah, throwing me out. Let me just, hold on one second. <laughs> Josephine, it's like we're married, isn't it? Do, do we not look, are we not like, I, it's, 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 we're so much alike, and I'm going to tell you how much alike we are, that when we come from the green room and we're walking down, we hug each other, no tongue. <laughs> Although once in a while it would be nice, you know. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. I know. Come on, it's funny. Laugh, laugh. It could, tomorrow, it could, tomorrow it could be over, you know. So, no, no, we come down, we get ready, we... We meditate a little bit. We do hold hands. We hug. And we say the same thing to each other. I love you. Because I could not do anything that I'm doing without that gentleman. Amanda, thank you and everyone at Landmark for the privilege. It surely is. I thank each and every one of you for joining us today. If we made you happy, great. If we didn't, please don't tell anyone. Okay, is that a deal? Okay. Is it? Thank you very much. I'll give you the 10 bucks later. I want you to fly away with me, and I want you to remember us that we were here today. And when you put your head on the pillow tonight, and you put the CPAP machine on, I wear it every night. I'll tell you the truth. Since I'm using it, it's better than sex. Um, no, really. It's, I, I got to tell you. Because this thing with, with, with Viagra and Cialis, and there's so many side effects, you know? It's like if you take one, you could get a hoo-ha for four hours. I'm only interested in a snappy 10 minutes, you know? But I put on that CPAP machine, and I'm out like a light. So it's good for your heart. I love you all. I want you to fly with me. you think we were singing? Climbing to the moon. Oh, well, you're an idiot, and I don't love you anymore. No. no, this is part of the act. We do this on purpose. We want to just make sure you're not sleeping and you're paying attention. What do you think? Sinatra or anyone else? No. One, once I was opening a I talk, I don't care. I was opening for Red Buttons. That ha red hair, he was on stage. It was running the dye was running into his green shirt. I ran out like a little mashugana with tissues to wipe his face, and it smudged. I don't 
little kid. I don't mind. Come fly with me. Let's fly. Let's fly away. If you can use some exotic moves, there's a bomb if I'm Bombay. Come fly with me. Let's fly. Let's fly away. Come fly with me. Let's float down to Peru. Get you up there where the air is rarefied. We'll just glide starry eyed. Once I get you up there, I'll be holding you so near. You may hear all oh, the angels cheer because we're together. Weather wise, it's such. Once again, my good buddy, Mr. Henry. I get you up there where the air is rarefied. We'll just glide starry eyed. Once I get you up there, I'll be holding you so near. You may hear all oh, the angels cheer because we're together. Weather wise. It's such a lovely day. Come on now, say the words. We'll beat the birds to Acapulco Bay. Well, it's perfect for a flying honeymoon, they say. Come fly with me. Charles Henry, Amanda, thank you, sweetheart. I love you. God bless you all. Happy holidays. Love all of you. Thank you so much, Warren. That was great. And it was the first time that I ever had a song dedicated to me at T, so we will have you back for sure. Oh, I'm not moving from this spot. Thank you, darling. Thank you all for coming this afternoon. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, please join us in two weeks for our next afternoon tea. September 27th. Thank you. Bye-bye.